Hello and welcome to this presentation on Outlook Integration in Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013. My name is David Mockray and I'm a CRM consultant with Adaptable Solutions in Auckland, New Zealand. Adaptable Solutions is a Microsoft partner and specialises in Microsoft ERP and CRM solutions. Now, Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013 is a bit of a mouthful, so for brevity I will just refer to it as CRM for the rest of this presentation. One of the major selling points of CRM is its tight integration with Outlook. They're both Microsoft products, so this is hardly surprising. I'm going to cover the basics of Outlook integration to give you a flavour of how you can use it to better manage your customer interactions. Let's get started. In order to integrate CRM with Outlook, you have to have downloaded and installed the Outlook client for CRM. The Outlook client comes as standard with CRM and is included in the cost of the licence. I'm not going to cover how to do that installation in this demo. Instead, I'm assuming you've already installed it. In this demo, I'm using Outlook 2013 and CRM 2013. So if you're following along on your own system, it may look quite different if you have a different version of either product. This is particularly true for CRM as the user interface for CRM 2013 has been totally redesigned. This is CRM 2013 here. However, the broad principles of the functionality of the Outlook integration with CRM are the same regardless of which versions you're using. When you install the Outlook client for CRM, you will see some new icons on your Outlook. You get this CRM tab and also a CRM section on the Home tab. And when you open an email, you have the CRM icons there as well. The first thing I want to show you is tracking emails in CRM. I track an email simply by selecting it and clicking Track from the CRM section of the ribbon. I don't even have to open the email. The Track button changes to Untrack. Now, when I go into CRM, I see the tracked email in there. Back in Outlook, this icon, which is the tracking icon, which looks like a little blue and green person, that gets added to the email. Also, at the bottom of the email, a section gets added which shows which CRM records this email is related to. It says regarding none. We'll come to that soon. A quicker way to view a tracked email in CRM is just to click on the View in CRM button. And there we can see the tracked email in CRM. Another useful thing about tracking is that it shows in red in the pane at the bottom of the email any people on the email who it can't find in CRM, whether that be the sender, the recipient or someone copied in on the email. If you want to then add that person to CRM, you just click on them and you get the choice of adding them as a contact or a lead. I won't bother doing that here. Another thing to note is that if I've tracked an incoming email and I then answer that email, the answer gets tracked automatically. Exactly how this works is up to the individual user. We'll see how to set personal options for how the tracking works for you in part two of this video. Now if you accidentally track an item in CRM, you can just as easily untrack it again. You just click untrack and you get this window asking if you want to delete the item in CRM. It would be normal to click yes here as you clearly didn't want it in CRM in the first place. Now you may be wondering what the point of tracking emails is. You already have the email in Outlook so how does it benefit you to track it in CRM as well? Well there is the benefit that once it's tracked anyone with access to your CRM activities can see the email in CRM. Also you can delete the email in Outlook and it stays in CRM so CRM in effect becomes a permanent record of all the emails you and other CRM users have tracked without clogging up your Outlook. But those aren't the only benefits. As you'll now see tracking emails is just the beginning. Once you've tracked an email you can do so much more. The first thing we're going to look at is how to use the set regarding function. When you set regarding for an email you are tracking it in CRM and associating it with a CRM record. You can associate an email with a number of standard CRM record types such as account or contact amongst others. You can also set up custom record types to suit your particular business and set those to have the option of emails attached to them too. To set an email as regarding a particular record simply click the set regarding button on the Outlook ribbon and select the record you want to associate the email with. You can do this for an untracked item in which case it will track it automatically or an item which is already tracked. Let's do that now. I start by opening the email I want to set as regarding an existing CRM record. I then click set regarding on the ribbon. It gives me an option of setting it to be regarding a record I've used recently or searching for one I haven't used recently. I will search for one I haven't used recently. I get this lookup window. I can select different record types from CRM such as account, campaign, etc. I'm going to set this email as regarding a contact. I'll set the contact as Jim Smith. Once you've set the email as regarding a CRM record, a link to the CRM record appears in the pane on the bottom of the email body. To view that record, simply click on the link. When you are in that record, you can see the email attached to that CRM record. There it is there. 
Indeed, you can click on any CRM record related to that email and be taken directly to that record in CRM. It's worth noting here that an email can have one or more related records, as we can see here, but it will only have one regarding record. A little earlier, I mentioned that if you track an email, then answer it, the answer is tracked. The same principle applies to set regarding as well. That is, if you have an email which you have set as regarding a CRM record, then forward or reply to that email, that forwarded or replied email will also be set as regarding that same CRM record. So, by setting regarding, you can keep all emails related to a particular record grouped under that record in CRM for all CRM users to see. This makes managing communications for a particular client or indeed communications relating to any record type in CRM much easier to manage. As well as setting an email as regarding an existing record in CRM, you can also create new records in CRM by using the Convert To option. So if you receive an email for, say, a potential new customer, you could convert that into a lead. Let's do that now. I have here an email from someone I think could be a good sales lead for our company. I start to convert it by tracking it. I then click Convert To and select Lead from the list. I can then put in the first and last name of the lead and their company. I then click Convert. And it creates that lead in CRM and takes me to that record. I can now use whatever lead management process my company uses to turn that lead into a new customer. That is out of scope for this video, so I'll just close that lead record for now. You can also convert an email to an opportunity. An opportunity is the term CRM uses to describe a potential sale. I have here an email from an existing client where they say they are interested in our new product. So as I did when converting the lead, I would just track the email. Then I click the Convert To button and select Opportunity from the list. A window appears asking which customer I want to associate this opportunity with. That is, who are we trying to sell to? In this case, that's XYZ Limited. The currency is to be in, that defaults to the New Zealand dollar, which is the default currency for this CRM, and any marketing campaign it is related to. We're going to leave that blank here though, as this sale is not related to any particular campaign. I then click Convert, and I'm taken into the new opportunity record in CRM, where I can start to use CRM's really rich functionality for opportunity management. Again, that's outside of our scope here, so I'll just close that opportunity again. The third thing you can convert an email into is a case. A case is a generic term CRM uses for things like customer issues or complaints. I have here an email from a customer who's having problems with one of our products. So I track this email and I convert it to a case. I enter what company it is about and what the subject is. I click convert and it takes me into the case in CRM. Now I can use the case management functionality in CRM to manage this case for my customer. Yet again, that's out of scope for this video, so I'll just close it. When you've tracked an email in CRM, you can also use some very useful tools to make it easier to respond to those emails. Let's look at those tools now. Firstly, you can reply using a predefined email template. You store those email templates in CRM, and you even get some already set up for you when you install CRM. Here they are here. You can add as many as you like or change the ones already there to better suit your needs. So I have here an email which is tracked in CRM. I click Reply and I'm given the option to insert template. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to pick the Thank you for registering with us template. This is one that I've used recently which is why it appears here. You may get this message asking if you want to replace the subject line with the standard template one. I will select OK. As you can see, the template is now applied to the email. This particular template doesn't include an attachment, but I could set up templates with attachments. Then both the attachment and the email body are added when the template is applied. You can also store sales literature documents in your CRM and then easily attach them to an email. Here's some sales literature that I've got stored in CRM, some for product X and some for product Y. If I go into the product X sales literature, there are two sales attachments and two Word documents in there, a Product X price list and a Product X specification. I have here a request from a customer for some information on one of our products. Let's send him some sales literature on that product. I select Reply. I click on the Attach Sales Literature button. I'm going to send this customer information on Product X. It appears here on this list because I've used it recently. As you can see, it attaches the two documents that were held in CRM to this email the Product X specification document and the Product X price list. And this email is now ready to send. 
CRM can also store knowledge base articles. Although a detailed look at the CRM knowledge base is outside the scope of this video, it's worth showing the email integration aspect. Here's a published article in CRM. It's about a loading problem for product X. If I open it, I can see it has instructions for customers on how to solve this problem. The integration with Outlook allows you to insert these instructions as a table into an email automatically. Let's do that now. I have here an email from a customer who's having a problem with our product. To insert the solution from the knowledge base, I just click reply and I click insert article. The product X loading problem article appears in this list because I've used it recently. I'll select it. And as you can see, it adds the instructions from the article in CRM to the email as a table. You can of course put other text around this table to make it more personalized for the customer. So that's it for a quick tour of the basics of Outlook integration with CRM 2013. There's a lot more to this topic, but this is a pretty good start. As I said at the start, the same broad principles apply for previous versions of CRM, so don't despair if you're not using CRM 2013 yet. In the next part of this video series, I'll be showing some more advanced features of Outlook integration with CRM 2013. As always, please feel free to call or email the team here at Adaptable Solutions with any of your CRM questions. Happy CRMing everyone!